We now have a working HDFS. However, in this video, I would like to also configure Yarn, which is a resource manager. Notice that we could proceed without Yarn, but using a central resource manager such as Yarn introduces some major improvements, especially since we are going to introduce Spark as another part of the Hadoop ecosystem later on. Again, in this video, I won't go into the details of what Yarn is. Instead, I will show you how to set everything up. So just like HDFS, Yarn must be configured via specific configuration files. There are a bunch of configurations you can make for Yarn, but in our case, we are fine with the defaults for most of the stuff. In our case, we would like to use the capacity scheduler and create two queues, one for production and another one for development. All right, so first let's get into the terminal and log in as Hadoop. So su Hadoop and provide the password we chose. All right, and let's go into the Hadoop folder, etc Hadoop. Let's list the content available there. So here I will deviate from my usual notion of entering the configurations by hand. Instead, I already replaced the configuration files with uh, custom ones. Um, I did that in order not to make any mistakes. However, I will now show you exactly what I've done. So there are basically two files you need to edit. The first one is yarn site XML, and that has some general configurations for yarn. So let's make that a bit, big, bit bigger. Now let's have a look at the file by piping the output of a cat command into the less program. So enter cat yarn hyphen site.xml and the pipe operator less. All right. So the cat command will retrieve the content of yarn site xml and the pipe operator will push the output of the cat command into the less program, which makes long text navigable. Okay, let's go through every single line of my configuration. As I said, your file will not contain any properties, hence you should include those. So the first property we set is yarn resource manager scheduler class. So this over here. Um, this property defines what scheduler we want to use. Um, as value, we must specify the Java class we want to use. The actual value is a bit long, but it represents the capacity scheduler. So this long value over here, this represents the capacity scheduler. All right, next the yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.queues defines the, so this one over here. So this defines the queues we would like to create. Note that we always um, have a root queue at the top. Below that, we can create our custom queues. Those queues are defined in the value tag and are separated by commas. So as you can see over there, we create a prod and a dev queue. Following the queue definition, we need to allocate resources to them. We do that by yarn.scheduler.capacity.the name of the queue.capacity and specify a fraction of resources we want to allocate to that queue. So this over here. As you can see, we are providing half of the resources to prod. So yarn.scheduler.capacity.prod.capacity is equal to 0.5 and yarn.scheduler.capacity.dev.capacity is also equal to 0.5. However, we also define how much of our resources can be allocated to our queues at maximum. So we do that down there. Now, how does that work? I mean, we just said split it by half, so why would I have to define maximums? Well, what if one queue does not use all the resources allocated to it? Then Yarn would allocate those resources to other queues. So for dev, for example, we say that it should uh, never use more than half of the resources in the system. So if you take a look at the property for dev, so yarn.scheduler.capacity.dev.maximum capacity, we set it to 0.5. So it should never use more than 50% of the systems or of the allocated resources. However, for prod, we allow it to use up to 70%. So for example, assume that your dev teams are not working. Hence, yarn would allocate 70% of the resources to prod. Now, when your dev team start using the dev queue, Yarn would shift resources from prod to dev such that resources are split in half again. And these are the basic uh, Yarn properties. Next, we need to do some configurations to the capacity scheduler. Now, for this, um, we first need to get out of the less program, so just hit Q. 
like this. Um, now open capacity scheduler.xml. Um, this will not be empty. Instead, it will have some default values assigned to it. I will show you what, what is different uh, in my file from the default configuration. Open it with cat and pipe the result into the last program. So cat capacity have in scheduler.xml, pipe operator, less. The first thing I changed is the property with the name yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.queues. So in your file, if you have not changed it, this will say yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.queues. Um, here I changed the value, so the value, uh, I changed it from default to prod comma def. This will indicate to the capacity scheduler that we want to use two separate queues with the names prod and def. Next you will find a property called yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.default.capacity. You will notice that it's not included in my configuration file because I removed that property entirely and replaced it with yarn.schedulercapacity.root.dev and root.prot.capacity. So I replaced that with um, those two properties, um, as you can see over there. Um, the value is equal to 50 for both properties since we want to split the resources equally between those two queues. Remember that we need um, two properties for that, one for every queue. So in your file, it would just be one, saying yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.default.capacity. But here I removed that and put in two separate properties um, for the prod and for the def queue. Okay, next I replaced the yarn.scheduler.capacity.root root.default.maximum capacity. And I basically did the same as before. So it's down there. All right, there it is. Um, so what I did here was I replaced the yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.default.maximum capacity and I replaced it with yarn scheduler capacity root prot and yarn scheduler capacity root def dot maximum capacity. So I know that's I know that's quite a lot. And for prot, I set the value to 70, and for def, I set the value to 50 because this is analog to the logic I included inside the yarn side XML file. Here I say that prod can utilize up to 70% of all resources if there are idle resources available. Okay, next, and this is actually quite a lot, I, um, I changed all root.default um, names such that it says only root dot X, Y, anything else. Um, so for example, um, you should have a property that says yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.default.state. But I removed the default um, because every property I assign to root will also be assigned to every queue below that root queue. And you should do that for every property you have in your um, configuration file, right? So for example, here you would have yarn.scheduler.capacity.root.default.default application lifetime. And I simply remove the dot .default because I want to apply that, uh, that um, configuration to all the queues underneath the root queue. Okay, so just make sure that you don't miss any of those. Now, since this is pretty complex, I will make sure to, etch my, to attach my config files to this video. However, I would advise you to take a look um, on how I configured it so you can do it as well. Um, we are now done configuring Yarn and in the next video we will fire up our cluster.